So let's talk about denormalization and how to denormalize for a Cassandra data model. Now, in the case where we have a relational database, nobody panic, I'm gonna show you a relational database model. This is how it works. So this should look familiar. Multiple tables, each one has an ID. These store different parts of your domain. So your data domain has videos, users, and comments. How are we gonna make these all work together? Well, if you worked with relational databases for a long time, you know the answer. You're going to do a query to join those together. How does that work? In this case, I wanna find some comments for a particular movie. If you look at those two tables, you have comments in one, you have videos in the other, so that data exists in two different places. So whenever I select a comment from videos, how am I gonna get that comment out if I just had the video? Well, the join statement. That join on comments is going to join those things together, the join statement. Now that is how relational databases work. In this case, I say the title is equal to interstellar, I know that I can use that to do a join on those two tables and get the comments just for that one title. That is how relational databases were designed, having multiple tables and then in the query, that's when I start building these things together. So the results of this query, in this case, will be if I want the title of Interstellar, I get the comments just for that one movie, but the join happens in the database. What about something a little more complicated? Maybe something like logins. We're looking for particular comments by a user. So here's this user emotions, and we wanna find out every comment that that user had put into the system. Again, another join. So in this case, it's just a few, but what if it's a lot more? Well, there's the problem with relational database modeling, is that eventually you're gonna run into the situation if you're not careful. And let's face it, you don't know when it's gonna happen but eventually you're gonna see that there's too many records in the join and it'll start slowing down your queries a lot. I've run relational databases for years and years and this is the thing that we always try to avoid. And of course you do things like add indexes to it or maybe truncate some data, which is really bad. You could do that. Or another thing that we did quite a bit with relational databases, that is denormalizing. Denormalizing is a really common technique even with relational databases, but it's a really critical task with Cassandra. If you look at this diagram, you see these two queries that we needed now represented in an entire table. So we wanna find all the comments for a video or comments by a particular user. Those are now tables and those tables store all of the data you need. If you look at the structure of these two tables, they look really similar and there is a duplication of data. Here's the thing you need to be okay with. When you denormalize, you're gonna have duplicate data. That's okay. Because you need data when you need it, not whenever the server is ready to give it to you. Or hang on, let me go do this really complicated join. Have you run an explain plan? It's probably a little expensive. In this case, you know exactly what you're getting. Looking at these two tables, yes, they're very much the same. However, look at the primary key. The primary key is very different because in the first one, video title is a partition key. Comment ID is the clustering column. The other table, comments by user, the user login is the partition key. The comment ID is again the clustering column. The subtlety here between those two data models is the partition key. What's that primary part of that record? It's the person or the video. And then the clustering column gives you the run out of everything that's happened for that video or for that person. That's a really super efficient data model and it works really well in the Cassandra world. And these are denormalized tables now of that same join that you had to do in a relational database. What it gives you is this really efficient and predictable query performance. So if I look at the query result for comments by video or comments by user, you get rows and columns in a very sequential way, but it's very fast. This is the key to high performance with a Cassandra data model is not only understanding the partition key and how that works by putting your data in the right place, the clustering column with the sort order, what is it gonna look like on disk? But then finally, how do I denormalize my data? Denormalizing is a really critical part of the plan. You're gonna be optimizing for certain queries in the way that you need it, when you need it. And sometimes, I'm gonna say this again, you're gonna have duplicate data, that's okay. When's the last time you were worried more about disk space than query performance? That's what I thought. So let's do an exercise on denormalization and see how it really works.